Oh, Smismas. If you still live in a part of the world where it actually snows, Smismas is the perfect excuse to wind down and play some Team Fortress 2. Hot chocolate in hand, an obnoxiously tacky sweater to keep you warm, there's no atmosphere like it. But the winter holidays are much more than just an excuse to rest. It's a time of excitement and gift galore. Christmas might be world round, but Valve, the flawless creative visionaries that they are, improved upon the dated concept of Christmas and gave it a TF2 spin with Smismas, celebrated by all TF2 fans 12 years in a row now. You'd think it'd be a big deal, but much like an attitude-ridden wife, it's less and less exciting as the years go on. Now why on Gaben's green earth is this? To answer that, we must take a look back at the Whoops, sorry about that. That's my TF2 YouTuber trope alarm. Yes, lady and gentlemen, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I will in fact have to go over the history of Smismas in an abridged yet comedic fashion that will neatly segue into the title of the video. So without a further ado, Smismas got its start in 2010 to cap off a year full of amazing things like the iPad, Fallout New Vegas, Swine Flu, Dubbed Australian Christmas, it introduced a brand new TF2 Santa equivalent called Old Nick. For all the many a 2010 lore fanatics, they added another tubular money making ploy as well, in Valve's own words. Festive crates! said Robin, his eyes rapidly unfocusing. And they can only be unlocked with a special festive key! He brandished a set of special keys to his house and car. Are you drunk? Asked Tom Bowie, taking Robin's special car keys away from him. Ha! 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 Robin agreed. Ike did introduce in this update that was thy fun favorite medieval mode. Twas the game mode yond restrict thee to melee. Still excitement and fame all thy way to present day. Yeah! Yeah! I a new version of Call of Duty! That's my hacking! That double hack! How come I can't even go to my quick scope thing? Aye aye, pretty how immature. You'd think that cap off the list of features, but no, Robin and Co. also added map stamps which provided an in-game way to directly, and often accidentally, support your favorite map creators, which was pretty much unheard of at the time. Oh my god, I bought a turbine stamp. This update was packed tighter than yo mama, but somehow next year's Christmas completely topped it. 2011 Smithmas was a weapon bonanza, adding the now staple flog, eureka effect, holiday punch, man melter, spicicle, rap assassin, <laughs> third degree, and of course the beloved Homsen 6000. As if all of these weapons weren't enough, this update unveiled the highly memorable, sophisticated, beloved Foundry. But you just splooged after hearing that one, huh? Just when you thought that was the peak comes Smithmas of 2012. You might know it by its other name. The frickin' Mecha Engineer update! MVM got an overhaul, followed by a new map and a whole new tour. Though sadly enough, Mecha Engine was skipped over by the average ticket snorting man-up fan. Keeping up with tradition, three new absolutely game-changing weapons make their debut as well. Loose Cannon, Rescue Ranger, and The Vaccinator were all from this update. Oh, and of course came the festive weapons, which look amazing year-round, so please do brandish them in the middle of June. No, no one minds, no one. 2013's Valve, not to be outdone by their past year selves, rolled out the absolute bombshell of a blog post, adding the, uh, gift of Holt. Though chin up! As a 2014 Smithmas picks the ball right back up with three new awesome weapons. Iron Bomber, Quickie Bomb, and the Panic Attack. TF2 team, if you still exist, please just bring back the old Panic Attack. 2015 Smithmas, or what you may know as Tough Break, baby. Adding contracts, maps, festivizers, war paints. After Tough Break, we start to see a shift in Smithmas. Tough Break was barely Smithmas themed, but that wasn't really the issue. It had possibly the most amount of content out of any TF2 update to date. Same cannot be said for anything that came afterward, though. 2016. Hats, war paints, taunts. 2017. Hats, war paints, taunts. 2018. Hats, war paints, taunts. 2019. Why don't you take an educated guess? And yeah, it's hats, war paints, and taunts! 
I'm sure you've heard this jazz all before, though there was a crack of good news in 2020 of all years, when a work from home bored ass Valve employee decided to stick in four community made winter themed maps, though he wasn't bored enough to actually play test them though, god no, putting in a certain less than ideal map, genuinely you might have forgotten, but I have not forgotten the absolute brown colored hellstorm that was this map, quote unquote intentional clipping, performance issues, massive sight lines, ugly visual style and need I go on, to those that were still holding hope since Jungle Inferno, this was the final nail in the coffin solidifying that Valve doesn't care! 2021 was the same thing, some good maps, some bad ones, and I'm sure this year is gonna be the exact same. Ever since 2016, Smithmas has felt less and less special, and now it's in the same boat as Scream Fortress, a completely automated clockwork event that's as predictable as the conclusion to this video. I really hate these automated updates to the point that it could probably be a video on its own, but at least it's better than nothing. Who cares, Indy? Why do you care so much about virtual TF2 Christmas? Sh sh shouldn't you be like spending time enjoying real life Christmas? To be uncharacteristically open with you, I've lived my whole life in a Muslim country with a Muslim family. We have to go to school on New Year's Eve. Basically live in a culture where Christmas doesn't exist while surrounding myself with American media. I always wanted to celebrate Christmas, putting up decorations, opening presents, checking your stocking, eating cookies, drinking eggnog with your family whilst wearing extremely tacky sweaters. I've always, always wanted that. And Smithmas gave me something semi-equivalent to it. Every update felt like someone out there cared enough to make sure I had a special little Smithmas. Oh crap, I didn't mean to do the thing where you cheaply end the video on an emotional speech. This self-aware poking fun joke isn't helping either. Uh, I need to be avant-garde, genre-defining, convention-breaking. Besides, I'm not making you walk away from this video with some depressing speech. I'm going to give you a present as a thank you for being here. I hope you're ready for the first ever TF2 commentary musical number. Yeah, I can't do that singing bit now. <laughs> so basically what happened was that I've been overworking myself so much with both my real life and this video and everything that I negated to have a good sleep schedule so much so that uh, my body was like sending me warning signs and I had to go to the hospital. I don't delve too deep into it. But basically, I was like, it had this happen like four days away from Christmas Eve when I wanted to get it out. And I was like, oh, no, I'm never going to get it out in time now. And Party Pug, uh, Not Sam G, and Breadman came in. Uh, the first two uh, did, did some of the editing that I just couldn't finish. Wasn't in a state to. I was basically just forced to rest. And Breadman and Party worked together to make a really brilliant thumbnail that I'm very happy with. I also don't want Philandy to be an unsung hero. He did the SFM work for the spy, all of his mouth movements, his hand movements. That was all his. And I truly am thankful for him for being patient through the creative process with me. It was a Christmas miracle. And, you know, maybe then... All of them coming in, giving me words of support and helping me get my project out and fulfilling my vision. They helped me celebrate Christmas in their own way. And I'm truly thankful to have as great of a pals as they do. Sorry for no singing bit, but I hope you have a Merry Christmas.